Washtenaw. Some of you have heard me tell <clears throat> the story of Ginger Graham, the former CEO of Amblin Pharmaceuticals. When Governor Strickland and I were first elected, the governor and I got a call from Amblin Pharmaceuticals in San Diego. And they basically said, we know you haven't taken office yet, but we need to get you involved now. Because we are looking to make a $500 million capital investment that will bring at least 400 to 500 jobs to Ohio in the near future and many more in the long future, long term future. And you are a part of a short list. You're competing with Arizona. You're competing with North Carolina, Massachusetts, a number of other states. And the governor and I decided that this was a high priority. The governor particularly said to me, let's make this an early test of our ability to be responsive to a business. So the governor and I and our Department of Development team focused in. And what we learned from Ginger Graham, CEO of Amlin, is that while she was interested in the grants and the tax credits and the loans, and I guarantee you we wouldn't have gotten into competition if we hadn't put them on the table and then competed with these other states, it was just the ticket of admission to the game. It didn't win the competition. Now, it might have been that 10 years ago, if you put enough money on the table, you won the competition. These days, it just gets you into the arena, onto the playing field. But once you're in the playing, on the playing field, the game changer is what Eric does every day, what Lisa Pat McDaniel does every day as the director of our Workforce and Talent Division. It's whether or not we can create a demand-driven, business-focused, workforce development system that is customized to the short-term and long-term needs of businesses. Building a skilled, creative workforce because, as Ginger said to me, we're not making a transactional decision, we're making a generational decision. So we need to know that you've got a higher education system that is linked in with your economic development system. And so working with the chancellor, Working with the two-year institutions and the four-year institutions and the Workforce Investment Boards, we listened to Amlin, we understood what they needed, and we created that customized solution, and that's why we won the competition and cut the ribbon uh, several months ago on that $500 million facility, and that's what we will continue to do. And one of the most exciting programs we're going to start under this initiative is one that we call Ohio Means Home. As we've talked to HR directors, as we've talked to executive recruiters, and as we've talked to CEOs, we've noticed a trend. And that is when they're looking for talent to bring into Ohio from outside our state, their best chance of success is when a woman or a man has some direct or indirect connection with the state of Ohio. Maybe they went to school here. Maybe their mother lives in Lima. Maybe their grandmother lives in Steubenville. Maybe their wife's parents still live in Finland. Maybe they graduated from Ohio State or Columbus State. But whatever the case is, if they have a connection, they're better off, better have a better chance of coming here. But the problem is, these executive recruiters and CEOs tell us, but well, we don't know where to find them. But we're going to work to find them. Working with the Chancellor and the University System of Ohio, we're going to create a website and a database called Ohio Means Home. And we're going to put together a database that will be updated on a regular basis. We will do segmented, targeted marketing to people around the world to encourage them to come back to Ohio to make Ohio their home. We believe that this has the great possibility of success and helps, will be able to help companies recruit the best possible talent, not only from in the state, but outside the state, and have the extra result of increasing Ohio's population.